In today's video, I want to take a look at how you can read an array of structures from a file in C. To start off, we should actually have a file and I'm gonna write it through C. I'm just gonna create it myself here. I have an input.txt and in here we have just three lines that represent, each, each line represents a struct. And basically how I set it up here is that uh, the first two are, let's say, the positions of something, so the x and the y, and the third one is the value of something else. And you'll notice here uh, they are separated by a space, but you can separate them with a comma if you want, and at each one of them there's going to be an, uh, a new line. And you can either have it like this or like this if you wanted to, depends on the way you want to write it, but I think this way it's uh, the more generic way to do so. So if you have a a new line right here at the end. How do we read from such a file a structure? And let's first create the structure. We want here a simple type def uh, struct. Let's say I'm gonna call it point, and we're gonna have an int x and y and the value, and of course name that point. And next up is to just start by opening the file. So file pointer file equals f open. And this guy takes in just the name of the file, input.txt, and then whether or not I want to read or write to it, I just want to read from it. That's very simple. If file is null, always error check your code. So if file is null, I'm just going to return an error code. I think you're already uh, accustomed to this uh, method. Now, once we have opened the file, there's a few tricks you can do to actually try and uh, verify if you are at the end of the file, right? And I think from my experience, the easiest way to do this is to actually first read one single line before any loops, any for or while loops. So just something like fgets, I'm gonna use the fgets function and this guy just takes in the buffer that we want to read into. We don't have a buffer. We want to actually declare one here. Uh, for, let's say 200 that's like 200 should be the max number of characters inside a line inside our text file so you can actually fiddle with this if you want to but here we have buffer 200 we pass in the number of characters and then of course we pass in the file that we want to read from so now that we have a line of text read from uh, this input.txt we can actually start the while loop because we actually do need a while loop and we do need a condition at the beginning of it. I'm gonna say while and the condition is going to be a function that tells us whether or not we are at the end of the file. So it's called feof, the text in the file and this function just returns true or false, whether or not we are or we are not. And we want to iterate over the file while we are not at the end of file, of course. So while we're not at the end of file, we're gonna have, first we're gonna start with a uh, line already read in here. So what we can do is already start parsing it. And I did make a video on how to parse or really serialize or, and deserialize a struct in C, you can check up top. But here we're gonna do that for a list of elements. And to start off, we're gonna have to define here our struct. This is where we're gonna save the data into. And then we're going to use the sscanf function. And the sscanf function is the same thing as the scanf function, except it takes in the first parameter a string. And instead of taking the input from the terminal, from the keyboard, it takes in the input from the string itself. So since the string, our, our string that we have in buffer here is, for example, 0, 1, 15, well, if a user were to type in that at a keyboard and hit enter, in scanf, you would have something like uh, so first the buffer would be the parameter and then you have the format be percent %d space percent %d space percent %d. Okay, so that would be those three integers. And then we just pass in the places in memory where we need to actually uh, save these, which is going to be the address of p.x, the address of p.y and the address of p.val. And these are just arbitrary values I don't know, think about maybe of, of a sparse matrix or some, it's some generic information that you sometimes have to actually save it in this format and it's pretty nice. So this doesn't mean really anything for us. 
now we have parsed this i guess we can just print it on the screen so we can check later so i'm gonna say here red uh point we say percent d percent d percent d backslash n and we know that p dot x p dot y and then p dot val is the third one and lastly we want to go a step further so we'll read the next line and for us for this while loop to work we're gonna have to add the reading part so this exact this exactly this line we're gonna have to add it at the end of the while loop that way if the next if we are for example here in the while loop so we have just parsed this line of code we got 101 inside our point uh, and we actually read next we try to read the next line there's nothing f gets hits the end of file and what that does is set a flag on our file here it says okay we are at the end of file alert we are at the end of file and that means that this function here can take a look at that flag and say oh okay i'm at the end of the file so i can return true and by returning true it gets negated so we get false here and it we get out of that while loop straight out we don't execute it once more and of course before finishing or before terminating our program we should close the file so f close of file should be called at the end if we try to launch this you will notice i'm going to get three points and they all correspond to this these three lines in the input.txt and i can actually add let's say i can add 11 12 and then 100 and hit enter if i save and run this again i should be getting four lines now and voila as you can see that works and from here on it's actually very straightforward you have the information inside the struct and we can swap this struct to be a sort of a member in an array if you want the whole uh, file inside an array so what i can do here is say point points of 100 so let's say we want to read at maximum 100 points but you can actually change that and uh, we can say point p we're going to change this to a pointer and say equals points plus uh, an i and this i is going to be an int i equals zero and of course um what i want to do here is say i plus plus once i have actually read one uh, one point and here it's going to complain that we are actually using dots instead of arrows and i have to change everything here to an arrow just like that and now it's going to dereference well it's going to it's going to take a look at uh, the address of p arrow x and since p is a point inside our struct dereferencing it we're going to get to the x value and getting the address of it we're going to actually get the address of that x inside the whatever point we are looking at and here of course we're printing the same values inside that array and actually we can change this so that instead of doing this we are simply iterating over it with a for loop so say for uh let's actually define here an n so n equals i because well we know that i is the number of elements the number of points read right if we went over this once we have read one point inside the array and if uh, if we went over this five times we read five points inside the array and i is going to be five so n is going to represent the number of elements and i'm going to use well i'm going to use i again to iterate over everything so i'm going to initialize it again with zero i'm going to go up to n and then i plus plus and then here i can add this uh, print f statement that i have added before and instead of uh p here i'm going to use points of i dot x dot y and dot val and now if we try to launch this we should get a proper result as you can see like this it does say the same thing we do get the same result but we now have the information all saved inside this array of points and that's really all there is to it the most common mistake when reading a list of structures in c from a file is to actually call fgets at the beginning of the while loop so something like this and then not calling it in the beginning at all if we do this we're actually going to get not uh valid data we're actually going to get 
a duplicated last point. That is because what, what happens really is that, well, we're at the beginning of the file, so this guy is true, right? We're exactly here, so it reads one line, right? F gets reads one line, that's fine. Okay, it goes up to here. Okay, so suppose we are at this 11 here, and um, this says, okay, we're still not at the end of file, so it's fine. We're gonna read a line, so we're gonna read this. Okay, we're still not the not at the end of the file, we're just um, almost at the end of the file, right? We, we still have to read one more character. So, this point gets processed, this scanf functions, this I++ works, but then this while checks again. Are we at the end of the file? Well, we're here, but we're not quite at the end of the file. The, the end of file flag was not set. So what happens next is F gets reads zero, zero characters, absolutely nothing. It hits the end of file. So here it hits end of file and the program just continues. So since it read zero uh, characters, the buffer remained unchanged. Well, it remained sim exactly the same as it was with the last uh, line that we read here. So it's just getting parsed again. So last, last point gets parsed again and gets added again to the, to the array. That's why you get a duplicated last line in this case. So really, I think the best way to do this is to either have it like this, or even you can even use the return value of F gets if you so desire. I'm going to leave a link in the description where you can see the documentation about what this does. Uh, but basically it's going to return a buffer pointer. So it's going to return the pointer to that buffer unless it hits uh, the end of file or it reads no characters and hits the end of file. And that's really all there is to it. I hope you got something out of this video. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. Take care.